Good. So we're here in Moab, Utah. When you think of desert crack climbing, incredible splitters, you think of Indian Creek with these like splitter walls absolutely everywhere. Ah! Just like line after line. Ah! Come on, come on. And then you have the White Rim where me and Pete have gone and done Century Crack ah! and Millennium Arch, these gigantic roof cracks. Actually just outside of Moab on the northern side of it, is this highly accessible area where you have places like Wall Street and also Day Canyon. In that area, you can get away from the crowds still, but you have some absolutely amazing lines. So the key here, we've either got get in and kind of go with the old arm bars or chicken wings, or we go European style and do a bower layback. I'm kind of, I'm a fan of right now because I can do with a whole lot less chicken wing in my life. I wanted to power layback to the end over there. Then I'm going to <coughs> whack a leg in knee pad on so I get a bit of extra friction with my knee against it. <laughs> Funky going on. Some funk. <laughs> I don't actually know what's going on. You've got to use this to get through to the lip. Then once you arrive at the lip, you're faced with such an interesting crux and sequence of moves in terms of off width thing. Because generally, when you get to the lip turn on an off width, the size tends to be quite standardized and the angles are kind of fixed you're either climbing a splitter or you're climbing something in a corner <laughs> shit shit that's disappointing sorry mo yep oh, I don't that. but this one it curves slightly it narrows up and then widens up slightly and it has these offset nature of the crack and it produces just like a totally brilliant sequence going around the lip but it also produces a very distinct sequence. You can't just blue collar grovel through it. You have to use a whole number of different techniques. There was classic private pirate, there was invert torpedoes, there was hand fist stacks, there was fist fist stacks, there was arm bars. There was even the kind of double palm thing. So it was like a flying pirate turning from an invert torpedo. With that, it was hard as well, so it wasn't Ah, uh, you can just technique your way around this and it won't be that bad once you've done it. You have to try properly. Yeah, that's the way. <sighs> okay, take. What's it like coming out of off width retirement? Oh, no, no, it's bad. It's that's, bad? It's bad, definitely it's bad. Yeah, but it's good in a bad way. Now the route actually got made in the first ascent by Pete and actually made a flash ascent of that first ascent, but had actually been opened up and found in previous years by a guy called Evan Wisherop. It was interesting watching Mary go and climb on this off width, having not really climbed off widths with her for a number of years now. Going and trying that with her, it was 
bit of a curiosity thing for me because I wanted to see how she'd kind of evolved as a climber over the last couple of years. And I know she hates inverts, that's not particularly her thing, but she was in this case very much forced into a bit more of an upside down position. I got my cheap knee pads on, and then we'll tape them in place. <laughs> I'm just gonna arm bar it, I think. We'll see how that actually works. <laughs> One of the things that you find when you come out to the desert is that because of the nature of the rock that you're climbing on, so sandstone, and it's constantly kind of degrading, and you're often throwing your ropes on the floor and they're getting covered in sand, you really need a durable rope. Like I've noticed over the years of coming to Utah and climbing on sandstone, that if I come out with something that doesn't have a really good quality sheath, the rope just wears through really quickly. It's not like it's due to sharp edges, it's simply the wear and tear factor with climbing on sandstone. So for me, choosing a rope which has this really durable but supple sheath is a really kind of critical factor in climbing your best because you need to use a rope and it not to get a core shot and wear through, but you also need that playoff of the rope being light enough and you want that kind of suppleness in the rope. And for me, the tendon rope that we use on this project was just that perfect kind of midway. It's not a super thick 10.2, it's not an ultra skinny 8.6, it sits in that kind of nine mil range, but it has that suppleness to the rope, but also a really good durability when it comes to landing through and lasting a whole trip. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, nice, Mary. Thanks. That's it, good. Yeah, good night.
front. Right. Oh, my fucking thigh is not moving up. Oh, you little bastard. A little fighter, isn't it? I did not make that look pretty. That's so hard. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. But a proper little try harder. Oh, I feel nauseous. Ooh. Oh, I got pumped. That's a meaty pitch. Jeez, Louise. Did you see how hard I had to try on those undercuts? Yeah. Frickin' hell, I was like all out. <laughs> Europeans would love that. 